Last week, we had names like Jamar Chase, Joe Burrow, MVS, B. John Robinson, Calvin Ridley, and Chuba Hubbard dominate in fantasy football. They helped people win their weeks. Well, in today's video, I'm bringing you 10 names that will do the same in week 11. Guys that will go nuclear through 10 weeks. We've got a hit rate of 64%. And I'm starting off with a player that I think is a fine RB2. I know a lot of you guys out there are struggling with buys. There's so many good teams on buys and running backs and wide receivers that you're missing. So if you have this player, you can fire him up with some relative confidence. That is Nick Chubb at the New Orleans Saints. Now, if you've been following this channel for a while, Nick Chubb came back in week seven and we've pretty much never featured him on this video. In fact, he's been on our bus video, a guy that we've been avoiding playing, but I think there is enough rationale now to play him with some confidence. The matchup is great versus the Saints. The Saints are the fifth best matchup for your running back when you adjust for schedule. And in the last five games alone, we've had so many running backs go off against this defense. Bucky Irving and Sean Tucker. Uh, Bucky had 18 fantasy points. Sean Tucker almost had 200 total yards, 10 yards per carry, and almost 35 fantasy points. Javante Williams had his best day as a professional, over six yards per clip, two touchdowns, 26 fantasy points. Chuba Hubbard had almost 170 total yards, two tuds. Bijan Robinson, two tuds, almost 30 fantasy points. The Saints defense is so easy to rush against right now. They actually give up the second highest yards per carry at 5.1 yards per carry to opposing offenses. And right now they're top six in most rushing yards and total yards allowed per game to opposing offenses. And what we've been waiting for with Nick Chubb is this slow ramp up. You can see in week seven, he had 55% of the rushing attempts. That goes to 70% in week eight and 75% in week nine. That is exactly what we want to see him dominating rushing attempt share on this team. Remember, we talked a lot about Brees Hall when thinking about Nick Chubb coming back from this injury in the sense of we didn't trust Brees Hall straight away. He had to get about a month in of football before we really started to put him into our lineups. And that's exactly how we're starting to feel now, you know, a full month removed from him um, coming back into the NFL from that nasty injury. I think he's a startable RB2, 80 plus yards is what I'm predicting and 15 plus PPR points. All right, the second player that we're firing up, we fired him up last week with confidence on this very video. We're doing it again. That is Cortland Sutton versus the Atlanta Falcons. Atlanta is the eighth best matchup for your wide receiver. Remember, Devonta Smith without A.J. Brown went off over 20 fantasy points. Then we saw Rasheed Rice have one of his best days as a pro. 12 catches, 110 yards, almost 30 fantasy points. Mike Evans had two tuds. Deontay Johnson, when he was a Carolina Panther, had 20 fantasy points. DK Metcalf had 20 fantasy points. And in the last three weeks, don't sleep on this duo. The Bo Nix, Cortland Sutton duo is hot. It is fire hot. In the last three weeks, Cortland Sutton is sixth in points per game amongst the wide receiver position, averaging just under 20 points per game. Sutton is actually averaging over 97 receiving yards per game in that span. Again, he and Bo Nix, there's a special connection forming up. These guys are really on the same page. I think we see Cortland Sutton with at least eight targets, 70 yards, and 17 plus PPR points. All righty, you ready for this? This does take me to my spicy, hot, bold take of the week. George Pickens and Russell Wilson are going to absolutely tear apart. When I say tear apart, I'm talking like beef brisket. Just melts, and melts off the boat. They are going to tear apart the Baltimore Ravens secondary in a divisional showdown. Russ is going to put up 300 yards and at least two tuds. Pickens is going to have at least 100 of those receiving yards and at least one touchdown, 20 PPR points. This is a fantastic matchup, probably as good as it gets the rest of the year for the Steelers until they play this team again, actually. Baltimore is the best matchup for wide receivers in fantasy football right now, and they are the third best matchup for quarterbacks in fantasy football. I've got George Pickens as my wide receiver 10 this week and Russell Wilson as my quarterback 8. I expect both of them to finish top 10. This secondary is... Swiss cheese, all right? It is, like we said, brisket off the bone, all right? Off the slow cooker. Respectfully, I don't really know why people thought Tredavious White was gonna make a huge difference for this team, but anyway, in the last five games, the Ravens defense have given Terry McLaurin two tuds, almost 24 fancy points. Cedric Tillman had two tuds, almost 100 yards, and almost 30 fancy points. Cortland Sutton had a day recently, um, over 23 fancy points, and Jamar Chase, Jamar Chase is averaging over 48 PPR points per game in the two games he's played against the uh, Ravens this year. The Ravens, if you look at quarterbacks as well, 
Dak Prescott had three tuds, almost 400 yards. Jaden Daniels had a good game. Jameis Winston had 334 passing yards and three touchdowns. And Joe Burrow is averaging over 33 fantasy points per game in a four-point passing touchdown league in his two games against the Baltimore Ravens. And the reason you're seeing these kind of numbers is because the way to beat this defense is through the air, not on the ground. Look, the Ravens right now give up the fewest rushing yards per game on the ground. It's probably not a good week for Najee Harris or Jalen Warren. Jalen Warren, if anything, might have the better game. But you beat this team through the air. They give up the most passing yards per game. They're the only team close to 300 passing yards per game on average. And I don't think people realize how good George Pickens has been since Russell t Wilson took over the quarterback one duties here. You can see with Russell Wilson, five catches, 111 yards and a touchdown. The next game, four catches, 74 yards, no touchdown. But if you remember that game, he almost had two touchdowns a whole bunch of more receiving yards as well. And then last week, five catches, 91 yards and a tud. He averaged about 60 yards with Russell, uh, with Justin Fields rather. And if you look, since we've seen the Russell Wilson takeover, Pickens is averaging more points per game in that span, week seven onwards, than Amon Ross St. Brown, Cooper Cup, Garrett Wilson, Terry McLaurin, AJ Brown, Drake London, Puka Nakua, and Malik Neighbors. And as far as Russell Wilson goes, Russ has had a top 10 quarterback finish in fantasy on a week. And two out of the three games he has played this year. Again, I think that these guys are going to dominate. Russ, 300 plus passing yards, two touchdowns. Pickens with 100 of those yards, a touchdown and 20 PPR points. All right, moving on. Let's talk about David Montgomery. It's going to be a big David Montgomery week, people. All right, versus the Jacksonville Jags. Jags are the third best matchup for your running back in fantasy football. You can see guys like Daria Goombawale, who stepped in for Joe Mixon, had over 15 points. Trey Sermon, who stepped in for Jonathan Taylor, had over 18 fantasy points. DeAndre Swift had over 115 total yards, over five yards per clip. Josh Jacobs, over five yards per clip, 25 fantasy points. Saquon Barkley, almost 200 yards, almost six yards per carry, almost 33 fantasy points. The point is, if you have a running back and they have the Jags on the schedule, probably going to be a pretty damn good week for them. The Jags defense are giving up the most yards per game to opposing offenses, and they're giving up almost four touchdowns worth of points per game. And here's why this is important. Okay, this game this week, this is the largest spread of the week I have seen in the NFL this year. 13 and a half points. The Lions are almost favored by two full touchdowns. They should be dominating this game, maybe from the second or third quarter onwards, running the clock out in the fourth quarter. We should see plenty of rushing touchdowns for both David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs. This team has the highest implied team point total on the week. The only team with 30 or more points implied team point total. So I think David Montgomery is going to have a damn day. 90 rushing yards, at least one touchdown and 18 plus PPR points. All right, the sixth player that we think is going to dominate the tight end position. It's tough at the tight end spot, all right? But... David Njoku, I think we're going to ride him against the Saints. Talked about Nick Chubb. Now we'll talk about David Njoku. It's a middle-of-the-pack matchup, but I'm not really so focused on the matchup. I mean, we have seen the Saints give up decent days so far in the last couple of weeks. Will Disley, for example, had almost 10 fantasy points, uh, a mediocre role. Jatavion Sanders had almost 13 fantasy points, 87 receiving yards. But why I'm excited to start David Njoku has nothing to do with the matchup, has everything to do with how this offense has changed. More specifically, Jameis Winston. All right, Jameis became the starter in week eight. He stayed the starter in week nine. And in those two weeks, no quarterback in the NFL threw more passing attempts, point blank period. All right, he had 87 passing attempts. That is more than Patrick Mahomes or Baker or Stafford or Burrow or Allen. Nobody came close to him. And Joku is going to continue to thrive in a pass-heavy offense with a gunslinger like Jameis Winston. I'm predicting eight targets and 16-plus PPR points. All right. Do you believe in redemption? Well, it is bounce back week for Brees Hall. Bounce back Brees. Brees Hall versus the Colts. Indianapolis is a middle of the pack matchup, but we have seen really good running backs have good days. For example, Joe Mixon in two games, both over 23 fantasy points. James Cook last week had 15 fantasy points, over 85 total yards. Tony Pollard had almost 18. Tank Bigsby had his best day ever against this defense. They are top four in rushing yards allowed per game and total yards allowed per game to opposing offenses. And look, Brees Hall's been in a rough patch. There's no way around that. He's averaged just under 11 points per game in the last three weeks, but he is still dominating the total touches in that backfield. And this team is struggling to get wins. Hmm. I don't know. 
Should we maybe change up the game plan a little bit to let Brees Hall cook? I don't know. Maybe that's a good idea. I think that's what happens this week. They have to establish the run. The Colts offense has not been able to move the ball very well. So you're not worried about a potential shootout. I'm predicting at least 20 touches, 100 plus um, all purpose yards and 18 plus PPR points. He's going to bounce back this week. All right. At number eight, let's ride the hot hand, baby. You never walk away from a heater. Y'all know that. Calvin Ridley versus the Vikings, the fifth best matchup for your wide receiver. We saw Jaden Reed have 27 points against this team. Garrett Wilson had over 100 yards, a touchdown in London. Amon Ra St. Brown over 100 yards, which is rare to say for Amon Ra this year. 25 fantasy points. Puka Nakua, his first day back from that injury, over 100 yards, 18 fantasy points. And, you know, kind of similar to the Ravens, you really want to attack this team through the air, not on the ground. You remember what Jonathan Taylor did against this team just recently versus the Vikings. I mean, he was completely stifled, but this team allows the second fewest rushing yards per game and the seventh most passing yards per game. And similar to Cortland Sutton, if you look at the last three weeks, these guys are both on heaters, but Calvin Ridley is averaging over 20 points per game. He is fifth amongst wide receivers on a points per game basis. And in that span, guys, he's averaging 100 receiving yards on the dot per game. And Will Levis, this is crazy. I never thought these words would come out of my mouth. But Will Levis played well. I mean, one of his only competent games of his career. Is that a sign of things to come? Against a solid Chargers defense last week, he had 78% of his passes completed. No interceptions. Are we living in a dreamland? Is this fantasy land? Oh, pun not intended. But look, I think we're going to continue to ride the hot hand. It's a low over under, but the Vikings are heavy favorites, which could lead to the Titans needing to pass the ball even into the late fourth quarter, which is what we want to see. And Ridley was one of those players who was on our trade for video last week. He is catching fire at the right time of the season. I'm saying nine targets, at least 80 yards and 17 plus PPR points. If you can, can go trade for him as a cheap flex, I would suggest to do that because his schedule rest of the season is so nice. All right. At number nine, let's talk Kareem the Dream Hunt. Second best matchup for your running backs against the Buffalo Bills. And this might be your last time to play the guy. This might be your swan song. All right. Isaiah Pacheco is back at practice. I'm not sure you're going to have another chance to start Kareem Hunt. Pacheco might be back next week, if not the week after. So it's a good matchup to start him. Derrick Henry had over 200 yards, 36 fantasy points. Daria Gumbawale, again, a 15-pointer. Brees Hall, over 170 total yards, 6 yards per carry, 21 fantasy points. And Devon A. Chan with 32 fantasy points or more in both of his games against this team. This team is allowing almost 5 yards per carry. And last week, we saw Kareem Hunt pretty much lead the way as a receiver for the Chiefs. He had 10 targets. What the hell? 10 targets for Kareem Hunt? He had the same amount of targets last week as Malik Neighbors, Darnell Mooney, Josh Downs, and CeeDee Lamb. He had more targets than Cortland Sutton, as an example. I mean, insane. If they're going to continue to use him that way before Pacheco comes back, must start. I'm predict predicting at least 20 touches and 16-plus PPR points. And the last player on today's video is Lad, the space creator, McConkie, if you know from the Dynasty channel. He's facing the Bengals. Bengals are the seventh best matchup for your wide receiver. We've seen plenty of wide receivers go off against him, right? Terry McLaurin had 100 yards in the tud. Uh, Deontay Johnson had a tud. Zay Flowers had 111 yards, no tud. Devonta Smith had a tud, 20 fantasy points. Jacoby Myers had over 105 yards, over 18 fantasy points. And this is very simple. I believe based off of game script, how I project this game to go, the Chargers are going to need to throw the ball. The Bengals offense is on fire man they are putting up so many points i think lad mcconkey is going to be needed in this game more than any other game this year i'm predicting at least eight targets 70 yards and 15 plus ppr points they're going to have to let justin herbert rip it in this game i appreciate you guys for watching the video do me a favor hit that like button to show some love subscribe if you like the content last thing i'll say is if you have a tough question this week trade questions start sit whatever the case may be check out the pinned comment you can ask me a question at any time on the flock fancy website and if you don't have a free account on Flock Fantasy just yet, when you sign up, use a promo code LAND, L-A-N-D, that's our code. And when you use our code, you get things like the expert consensus rankings, the My Team Analyzer, and the trade calculator all for free just by using our promo code. I appreciate you for watching. We'll see you soon. All up. Let's go get some wins. Now that those idiots are done talking, who needs some rankings? Hell yeah, I need some rankings. Then use promo code LAND, L-A-N-D, for 30% off any membership at flockfantasy.com. Oh.